story about those flowers um, <laughs> for Coach Flower. But about a couple of weeks ago, Adam and I were at a coffee shop here in Colorado Springs. We were on a conference phone call, and this hawk flies out of this tree and lands in the backyard right across the street. And we didn't think much of it. We were on the phone call. And when I hung up, when we hung up the phone call, we were like, did that hawk really go in there? So we sneaked across the road, peeking into the fence. I'm sure the neighbors were like, what's going on? And there was, sure enough, there was a hawk in there, and we saw a chicken coop. And the hawk was on top of one of the chickens. And to make a long story short, before too long, the owner of the house comes home concerned, and now we're all in the backyard together. And the hawk is still on the chicken, and we can't tell if the chicken's dead or alive or what. And so Adam, being macho, he's like, I'm going to get the hawk off the chicken. And he takes his big, long stick, and then he decides to film it. So he gets out his iPhone. And he's up, going up to the hawk and starts poking the hawk in the chest with a stick. And the hawk's eyes get really big. And the hawk's like, poke me again. I dare you, poke me again. Yeah, where was Tim? Tim's in the corner with the other chicken. He's in the other <laughs> Standing back there going, you really shouldn't be doing that, man. You really shouldn't be doing that. So anyway, long story short, about three days ago, I get an email on Facebook from a high school classmate of mine who says, I'm 90% sure you saw a hawk kill one of my chickens. Last week. I was like, no way. And more than that, so we emailed back and forth, and I was like, no kidding, that's Tanya Anderson. I went to high school with this girl, and she happens to own a flower shop just down the road. And we were looking for some flowers for Coach Flower, so that's how we kind of got the, uh, so Springs in Bloom Flowers. If you feel like you want to go there and buy Coach Flower, sorry, if you want to go buy Tanya some flowers for the condolences for, for her chicken bag, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, flowers for Tanya. Condolences. So, our condolences. Yeah, wrong. Way too long. We've been like 18, about 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19 years. Friends. And seriously, from day almost one, as long as I've been alive. Almost as long as I've been alive. Yeah, it's not my fault. It's one of those things where you kind of let after after so many years, you think. But now I have to about Adam because actually, before we started, it's, it's funny because Adam actually. Coach Flower gave this whole list of stuff that he's done. I mean, 13 minutes and 10 seconds in a 5K is respectable. <laughs> Four national championships while in college, respectable. Eight or nine, eight or nine national championships, eight. respectable. Six in the world of cross country, pretty good, but you know what he's best known for? Being married to Carrie Goucher. <laughs> that is so true. That is really true, too. So he can make money in Texas and Austin, but there's always that. I can't. I, I'd like to deny that, but it's so true. <laughs> wow. So, um, anyway, far day so, through. Yeah, you want to go to one okay. so we're, What we're going to talk about today, we're going to be talking about this concept called closing the gap. I know this slide's a little dark, but if you could read this, it say, yesterday I was chasing the person I am today, and today I'm chasing the person I hope to be tomorrow. We love that as, a, as kind of a, one of our favorite quotes of how we're always making progress between the person and the runner that we are right now and where we want to be. And we call that closing the gap. A line between tough and stupid. You can't read that. This says tough, it says stupid. It says stupid. When we wrote the book, I wanted this to be called The Line Between Tough and Adam. <laughs> Well, you know, here's the thing with the line between tough and stupid, right? Okay, we've all been there as the runners. You, the key is you want to get as close as you possibly can to the tough side of the line without crossing over to the stupid side of the line. And the hard part is, is with that determination and with that drive that we all have as runners, we want to go, we want to get there, we want to achieve our goals, so we push, 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 push. And in my career, I struggled with that a lot because I figured, hey, it doesn't matter if I'm hurt, it doesn't matter if I'm struggling, if I'm limping along, as long as I can get my run in, I'm, I'm going to finish this workout, I'm going to get faster and better. So before we go any further, let's just, I want to do a quick poll. Raise your hand if you think you have been on the wrong side of this line. Yeah. <laughs> Look around the room. Like, and runners are supposed to be some of the smartest people on the planet. Which we are, most of us we are. But, you know, we, we have a hard thing, the really hard thing. And so, so, in, in running in life, like we like to say, is in running in life, there are times when you need to be tough, refuse to give in, cling to our vision, and fight through obstacles standing in our way. And in other times, 
We need to know when to bend. We need to be willing to adapt to unpredictable circumstances before our own tenacity pushes us across the line to the stupid side. To the Adam side of the line. To the Adam side of the line. Right, well, I'm going to read a story. So in the book, we, we had a lot of reflection through the years. And there's a story in here that I wrote um, called The Line Between Tough and Stupid. And it's, um, so imagine the line right here, because I'm standing right on it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stand here. Right there, Tim's going to be a jerk right now. And I'm going to act out which side of the line Adam's on. <coughs> OK, so here we go. There's a fine line between tough and stupid. It is a line that I have trouble walking my entire life. And it has occasionally come back to haunt me. In 2000, I was a proud owner of my first home. It was a new home that needed a lot of work to finish. I could have hired a landscaper to finish the backyard and a builder to put in the deck, but I thought it'd be fun and challenging to do both myself. So one day, some of my good friends, that guy, <laughs> other, that brother in law right there, Paul Katz was there as well, anyway, decided to, uh, um, decided to do some landscaping. They helped me dig trenches for the new sprinkler system as well as haul 11 tons of gravel and dirt from the driveway to the backyard, wheelbarrow, one wheelbarrow at a time. The Olympic trials were seven weeks away. The smart thing would have been to easy and rely on my friends to do the heavy lifting. I could have taken smaller loads in my wheelbarrow or just spread the work out over several days, but I had to be tough and outwork everyone else. That day, I was on the wrong side of the line between tough and stupid. Only several years later did I learn that on that day, I had suffered, suffered bilateral sports injuries. All I knew was that my back hurt. I was also rushing back from an Achilles tendon injury and hammering 90 miles a week without much space. The day after the dirt haul, I went on a 20 mile run, and by the end of the run, my sacral iliac joint in my lower back, right back here, was killing me. Not wanting to miss a day, I pushed through. Since I, I know you want to talk to I'll tell you. No, it's like, I, I, want them, I want them for the vlog. Do you want me to take a picture? Maybe. That's Heather, no, by the way. No, no. That's Heather. Yes. No. Okay. You guys can go. Okay. Okay. These are two. two him. This is Tim. Hi. And that's, and that's Adam. Hey. How you doing? These guys are freaking awesome. Okay. Good luck. I miss Max. Two years ago, we did Gold Hill and that literally killed me. So. He, he's met Mark Wentmore. I just, uh, Magnolia Road for me is, I'm never going to run it again. <laughs> too many times, right? Too, too many memories. Well, I, I'll, I, if I could run, I would gladly run. Yeah, no, but I used to run Mags with Adam his freshman year. Those were some of the best conversations we ever had. Yeah. Just doing like a 14 mile or something. Oh, well, we then did, it got real. We did Gold Hill and Night City was out there then, too. Hi. Um, so, okay, so those, I didn't really have like an intro this morning or anything. I know I've been blocked in a couple ways. I'm really, 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 really sorry. It's just work's been really crazy. Um, you know, we've had people like casing the place like they were gonna rob it and everything and then I had a really bad night um, with my drawer Thursday and that was just horrible. Um, I got my first write up, I think. Um, anyways, but those people you saw earlier, um, the ones that I introduced after the, I, the clips of them talking, um, that's Adam Goucher and Tim Catalano. They're authors of this fabulous book called Running the Edge. It is not only a book about running, but it's a it's like a book about life basically. And these two are very, very inspiring, especially for me. Um, and it still amazes me that they these two guys, uh, one being a former Olympian, um you know, this other uh, kind of a coaching legend for my cross country team, you know, they talk to me and I consider them my friends and everything, and it's just weird and amazing. So, um, Adam, Tim, it was an honor hearing you guys speak again today. It was really amazing seeing you guys again. Um, so, yeah, thank you for putting up with the camera being in your face. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, that was basically my day today. I got up at 5 a.m. after like two hours, maybe two and a half hours of sleep. Um, went for to Arvada for a 10 mile ride. I was home for maybe 20 minutes before I was leaving again. Barely had time to shower and change so I could go down to Colorado Springs and hear these two talk. I mean, these two are 
I can't even begin to describe how these two feel. Um, so right now it is currently, it's currently the next day, it's 12.04 a.m.